a guy that we're going to talk about and just talked uh, about in the opening segment won 31 games. He's now being treated by Dr. Lox, who is in the studio. Dr. Lox, how are you? Talk right into that microphone over there. Uh, I am good. Nice to see you, Ron. JP. What's up, Doctor Locks? How are you? I am uh, well. Uh, ran here, had some lunch, and um, doing good right now. <laughs> you are a busy, busy man. So yes. many people are are going to you now. He's world famous. Yeah, you are world famous, Beverly Hills, and now in Germany, people are talking about your stem cell therapy. Derek Brooks swears by you after you fixed his wrists, and he came back last Friday, and I did his knee, and you did his knee. Yeah, so he came back for seconds, but uh, the story is even more interesting. Um, um, a last summer when I did him, um, um, the, I did a radio LA host, who, uh, uh, a sports show, mm-hmm. uh, who used to be a USC halfback, and when they played FSU, Derek crushed him. So <laughs> he wants to talk to Derek, but now Eric Dickerson is a is is part time co host. So Eric um, and Derek know each other. So Derek called him two weeks ago. I didn't know that. Friday he shows up and he says, "He says I called ED two weeks ago. He, he wants to know when this thing's happening. Yeah. So I'm going to fly to L.A. in two weeks and it's all supposed to happen. I don't, know how you, 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 I don't know how you do it with your schedule. And a guy you're going to be treating here soon who won those 31 games and threw 336 innings in one year with 28 complete games joins us. Denny McLean is on the phone. Denny, how are you? I'm fine, guys. How are you? Good. Excellent. May I, say, may I say one thing about Tampa Bay? We lived there for a long time after I retired. We lived in Lakeland, then we lived in St. Pete, then we finally moved back to Tampa, lived up on Dale Mabry. And uh, I've got to tell you one thing about I come to, almost every year to the dinner that they have in February. In fact, I'll be down there again this year uh, for the big charity dinner that yeah. they do every year. And I've got to tell you something. And I said this a couple of years ago to Dave McCarthy, who runs the Ted Williams Museum down there. I said, this city of Tampa, the Tampa Bay Rays players, based upon what I've seen the last three, four, five years, they are the most giving, caring guys for a community that I've ever been around. I've been around a number of clubs, including Detroit, for a long time. I have never seen such charitable acts and absolutely interested in what the community is doing more than the the, the Tampa Bay race. I mean, it's unbelievable what, what I saw over the, the last four or five years. What a great thing to hear, man, yeah, about our is. own community. And, and and we do, live it. Longo does a great job. Chris Archer, uh, Logan Forsythe, they all do great jobs, and then they get traded. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the downside <laughs> of it, Denny. <laughs> Denny, how is your arm still attached to you? <laughs> well, it isn't anymore. <laughs> I, told, I, told, I forgot to tell Doc the other day, um, I finally, after 45 years, finally severed my right shoulder. I, se- I had to retire because I, my rotator cuff uh, had a, a pretty significant tear in it, and I couldn't pitch anymore. Well, then what happens is over the next 40, 45 years, somebody at uh, Ford Hospital up here in Detroit said, uh, an orthopedic guy said, one day that whole rotator cuff is coming apart. And it finally did about three or four weeks ago. So oh. it, it, it's useless right now. So I'm going to – somebody's got to work on it pretty soon. Either I'm going to have an operation or at least start with stem cell. Stem cell. Dr. Locks, man, he'll Do fix it. you up. You know it, Denny. Um, I know that. When we see pitchers these year, these days, rather, in modern-day baseball, we were just talking about James Shields had 11 complete games uh, in 2011, which is a lot by modern-day standards. 28 sure. complete games in one season – that wasn't the norm. You had an unbelievable year, but a lot of guys threw in double-digit complete games. What do you think the big difference is today? Well, number one, we pitched every fourth day. I think we were uh, – they, they, these guys today, I think, are in much better condition to lift weights than they are to pitch. Uh, you don't run the ball across home plate. You pitch the ball <laughs> across home plate. I don't think they concentrate enough on pitching. I don't think they throw enough. And if you don't throw it, it's like a basketball player. He goes out and shoots 500 free throws a day so he can make that free throw at the, at the, at the proper moment. Baseball pitchers should be doing the same thing. They should throw a minimum of seven, eight, nine minutes every day. And then once every four or five days until the season starts, you got to let it all hang out about every five or six days. Uh, and that's not what's going on because if you don't build up that ability, that strength, you're never going to be consistent. And I think that's what's wrong with the game today. We've got a lot of guys throwing at 95 if you believe the radar guns, uh, radar guns, I think, are just a great hoopla uh, that promote the game. It's, it's a great yeah. way to promote the game. But um, we've seen too many guys that uh, allegedly throw the ball at 9,500 miles an hour get hurt. 
And what happens is they fall in love with their fastball. The next thing they know, they got a little sore arm. They go to a slider. They start short arming the ball. And what's next? They got to go see Dr. Lux. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, tell me what you're doing for what you can do for rotator cuffs and you do and for Tommy John and a lot of other things. Well, um, I, I, when I was talking with Denny yesterday, I, I, I wanted his permission because um, every uh, pitcher that I've ever done has not given me permission to discuss their case. So if y'all don't have permission, it violates HIPAA. Right. So I've, I've had uh, three time all-star hundred million dollar contract. Um, I had surgery by two of the biggest names in the game, which I won't say who um, didn't get better. Lost his contract uh, was sent to me. And uh, um, he started throwing 95 a radar gun got on him and he got signed and disappeared the next day. <laughs> And then well, on his... I give, and I can give you a great story too. I mean, Gordy Howe and I were very close, and um, Gordy uh, had stem cell. Uh, he, they flew him down to Mexico. People guaranteed him that he'd keep come out of Mexico running and rocking and rolling. He went down in an ambulatory condition, and uh, when he came out of the hospital about five days later, four or five days later, from the stem cell uh, process procedure. He was actually walking down the hallways on his own, no wheelchair, wow. and flew home first class wow. back to Detroit. Amazing that's story. What, that's what right. That's what stem cell did. We have on the line the last 30-game winner in the major leagues. He also won the Cy Young Award as well as the Most Valuable Player Award. A hell of a year for Denny McLean, who joins us along with Dr. Locks, who will be treating Denny as he tries to get his arm and some other body parts back working at 100%. I know you took a be beating. Careful. <laughs> be careful, I will. Uh, Denny, talk about the home run you gave up to Mickey Mantle. Some controversy. He broke Jimmy Fox's record with that home run. I think it was 535. Yeah. What happened then? Yeah, he uh, Mickey was my idol growing up. I mean, I was uh, a generation behind him, more or less, and uh, at least a decade. And um, he was the guy. I mean, there were two guys that I, uh, that I admired more than anybody else growing up. One was Mickey Mantle. The other was L.K. Line. And here, you know, I signed with, wound up with the Detroit Tigers, and first guy I meet in the Detroit Tiger clubhouse is Al Kaline, and the next baseball club they played the next following weekend were the New York Yankees. There was Mickey Mantle. I'm standing next to him. I mean, it was a, a child's dream come true. Anyway, um, this was his last time he was in Detroit. He was retiring. He's already announced his retirement at 68, and um, he needed one more home run to go by Jimmy Fox, and uh, I called the catcher out. Jimmy Price and I said, "Listen, tell Mickey to get ready." And uh, Price <laughs> said, uh, "What the hell does that mean?" I said, "Just I said, listen, we're winning six to one, two outs, bottom of the ninth. He can't hit a six-run homer. <laughs> only only a single-run home run he can hit. There's two outs. Keep that in mind, Jim. Just tell him to be ready." He says, "That's cheating. We're going to get in trouble." I said, "We're not going to get in trouble." <laughs> so he goes behind home plate, didn't say a word to Mantle. So I throw the first pitch at about 60 miles an hour on an arc. And uh, the strike right down the middle, Mantle didn't even move. And he looked at Price and said, what the hell is going on with him? And Price says, I can't tell you. It'd be cheating. So, uh, the home plate umpire, Emmett Ashford, says to Price, what was that all about? And Price now thinks the umpire is going to give him up. And so Price says, I don't know. I don't know. what He's trying to do something silly. So Emmett Ashford, first black umpire in the history of Major League Baseball, says, you go ask him what he's going to do with the next pitch. So now Emmett all of a sudden caught on to it. So here comes Price. He says, listen, I don't know how far we're going to get in trouble, but Emmett wants to know if you're going to do it again now. I said, you got to be kidding. So I tell him, I said, tell him the same thing. So he goes behind home plate. He says, would you, both of you guys just be ready? Just be ready. <laughs> so I throw the next pitch. 60 miles an hour on an arc, and Mantle takes it again. Now I know, now I know I'm not working with a Rhodes Scholar. Right? <laughs> he might have had a couple of beers, too. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever. But uh, so the next pitch, I yelled down to him. I said, where the hell do you want it? And he puts his hand out, and uh, I said, all right, throw another one, 60 miles an hour on an arc, and he fouls it off. So I said, listen, just tell me where, man. Just please. I said, we can't keep this up all day. we got to be somewhere tonight. So uh, the next thing he does, he puts his hand out just, just above the belt and uh, threw another pitch right in the same place, and he hit it about 19 miles. Uh, so he 
goes around, gets all the adulation that you can accept and if, at any one moment. It was unbelievable what a standing ovation was. Then uh, what happens is Joe Pepitone is the next hitter. Joe Pepitone comes up, and he says, hey, I'm going to be here next year. He's retired. <laughs> <laughs> so I wound up as hard as I could, as hard as I could, and threw the, one of the hardest fastballs I threw all year. And this is the last game I'm pitching that year, and my 31st win. And um, – uh, I threw the ball right behind his head so I wouldn't hit him. <laughs> and I knocked him down. His helmet went towards oh. the backstop. His bat went towards the third base line. <laughs> and it looked like a moth or a fly coming off his head, a big fly. <laughs> you, know what, you know what it was? What? It was his toupee. Oh. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this, the umpires back then wore their chest protectors outside their jersey. Mm-hmm. So the toupee wound up on the front of the chest protector of the Ashford. <laughs> What a great story. Is there Denny, a picture of that anywhere, Denny? Moment. That's awesome. Denny, oh thanks so much God. for being with us today. Good luck when All you right. get Dr. Locks working on you, brother. Thank you. And, Work for me, brother. And, 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 if, and listen, if you see Eiserman down there, tell him I said hello. We we'll have, we'll do, have, yeah, man. Steve Eiserman, all those years in Detroit yeah. as a captain. He's busy looking for a defenseman your size, Denny. <laughs> it's what he needs and, right now. And hoping for another victory tomorrow night in Florida. All right, before we let you go, Dr. Locks, a story of you growing organs. Yes. What okay, is how is about? that even possible? Well, I don't do it, but um, <clears throat> um, several universities are doing it now. Uh, University of Pittsburgh is, they take a 3D bioprinter, mm-hmm. a 3D bioprinter, and instead of ink, you put stem cells in, and it just prints whatever you want. And so they can grow cartilage, uh, Wake Forest, uh, the head of the regenerative medicine um, program, uh, Anthony Natala, um, is a urologist and uh he hmm. bioprinted a kidney and put it in a 20 year old that's incredible i, I know i thought but, you were going somewhere else uh, there with the urologist the penile implant <laughs> no well they, they they can do that too but but uh well, then, but, i'd like to make an order but but, but extra but, large please yeah uh but i know a, i know a, a urologist in palm springs that can do crazy stuff with stem cells. Hey, there you go. One more thing. Um, you worked wonders on JP's knees. I was just telling you when we first talked off the air, I got an elbow thing, a little minor thing, just going to work through it. But I know that in my back pocket, I have for the future stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine and Dr. Locks to save me like he did. And yeah. you, you talk about your knees like uh, like they're brand new. It's I, I couldn't, like a year and a half ago before I saw you, I couldn't do I couldn't do squats anymore. I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't play tennis. Tennis is something I love to play. And I couldn't even do it anymore. I'd have to ice my knees for three days afterwards. And now it's it's awesome. I can go out and play. No pain and uh, no ice afterwards. It's it's good stuff. So thanks, 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 thanks. And you're absolutely welcome. And Dr. Locks, I'm thinking, I don't know, in the next two, three, five years, I'll be needing your services. So by then, it's going to be so. I, I'm. It's going to be so advanced. It'll probably t- take ten minutes. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> you do. You do great stuff, Doctor Lox. Thank you. For those that um, are aching and you want to get rid of your pain, Doctor Lox L O X. You can find him online, DrLox.com. Derek Brooks. It worked so well for his wrists. He decided to yeah. do his knee. You know how much money you've cost people like me and everybody else that plays golf with Derek now. Because <laughs> now he can play without pain, and now you're fixing his knee. And like, come on, man! And his handicap still doesn't come down. I don't well, know what's up with that. Derek's doing movies now. Um, he's been movie producer. He's all over the place. Yeah, uh, he's he's good man. Another one of the great quality guys we got yes. here in the community for one Tampa Bay. Wonderful yep. individual. Thank you, Doctor Locks. L O X. Doctor Locks. Dot com.